So let's go into a little bit more detail about marketing channels. It's it's one of the areas that uh, many uh, people that are new to business don't fully appreciate how the money is divided up uh, from when you buy things in a store all the way back to the manufacturers and the different levels in uh, retail channels and how everybody, all the middlemen and the producers and the retailers, how everyone gets their share of, uh, of any of the profits that are being gathered from the transaction. The typical market channels to consumers are shown in, this, uh, in the figure on this slide. Um, in channel A, the product moves from the producer directly to the consumer. Um, farmers who sell their fruit and vegetables to consumers at a roadside stand might be an example of this, but also uh, increasingly uh, retailer or excuse me producers that sell on the internet and ship directly to customers is another example of this. In channel B or in, in, in a potential uh, channel model B, the producer goes through from the uh, goes from the producer to a retailer who then sells. So this would be a, a website perhaps that has multiple diff, multiple products that are sold through it, and then they're they're operating as a retailer online. But more commonly, uh, local retailers who sell products that are made or, or produced locally, like a, uh, a shop or a farmer's market that sells uh, products from various farmers that uh, don't do so on consignment, but rather buy them and then resell them. This type of channels is often used for things like college textbooks, automobiles, and appliances. Um, in channel C, the product is handled by a wholesaler and a retailer before it reaches the consumer. In this particular case, the producer sells to the wholesaler, who sells to the retailer, who sells to the consumers. Um, these marketing channels distribute a wide variety, a wide range of products from refrigerators, televisions, soft drinks, cigars, or excuse me, cigarettes, clocks, um, watches, office products, many different th types of things go through this type of, uh, of channel. But notice everywhere along the way, people tend to or need to become to get their um, their margin and their profit associated with performing their function in this marketing channel. And so therefore you could think about pricing, which is essentially, this is a kind of a heuristic, it's doubled. The producer sells it to the wholesaler who then doubles the price and sells it to the retailer who then doubles the price and sells it to consumers. It's not that simple, but you can see how the value starts to be divided up. Um, Many times when people are thinking about launching a product, they assume that as a producer, you're gonna get all the profit, uh, even if you sell it through channels. And that just can't be the case because everybody has to make money in order to perform their function. Channel D is a product that first goes through an agent, then goes through a wholesaler, then goes through a retailer before it gets to the consumers. This long channel of distribution is especially, especially useful for convenience products Candy and some produce are often sold by agents who bring buyers and sellers together. So the agents take the producers who might make specialty products and introduce them into the wholesaler channel, which then introduces them or then sells them into the retailer channel, which then sells them to end customers. So there's yet another layer of middlemen who help to, um, to, keep, to facilitate distribution. And again, in every case, people have to make money along the way. So you have to be ready for uh, making a, a significant amount of profit between the end user price and the producer price if you're going through these channels because everyone has to, again, heuristic rule of thumb, you might think of double your product, doubling the price every time you go through, which means that something that you make for $5 might ultimately have to sell for for 10 to the, to the um, uh, for, for 10 when it's sold by the producer, or for 10 when it's when then for 20 when it's sold excuse me, when it's sold by the agent 20 when it's sold by the wholesaler and then 40 when it's sold by the the, the retailer again like i said that's a rule of thumb and it's uh, it it uh, it might it might you might be able to trim a little bit of that but the idea is you got to keep in mind that there's a lot of value that's used up in the marketing chain let's talk about distribution decisions a major distribution decision is uh, how widely to distribute the products, to what kinds of outlets do you distribute it, that is how many and what types of retail channels, distribution channels that you want to uh, have carry your product. 
The intensity of the market coverage depends upon buyer behavior as well as the nature of the target market and the competition. Intensive distribution makes a product available in as many outlets as possible because the availability of the product is important to the producers. For convenience products, for example, bread, milk, gasoline, soft drinks, chewing gum, a nearby location with a minimum of time spent searching for it is, is important for sales. That's what customers want. They just want to go to the convenience store and get the milk they want. So you have to have an intensive distribution. Selective distribution uses only a small number of outlets uh, that, uh, that to expose their products to customers. This is most often used for products that consumer, consumers only want to buy after shopping and comparing price and quality. Many products sold on a selective basis require salesperson assistance, technical advice, warranties, or repair service to maintain service satisfaction. Under this scenario, where you sell it, which outlet you choose to sell it, has uh, tells the, is signaling to the consumer something about the quality of the product. So you don't want to overly saturate the market because you're trying to add a sense of exclusivity to the product that you're selling. To saturate market intensely, wholesalers and many varied, uh, many varied retailers try to make the product available at every location where the consumer might desire to purchase it. For example, uh, Zoom Systems provides robotic vending machines for products beyond candy and drinks. Zoom, Zoom has 1,500 machines in airports and hotels across the United States. Some, selling, some of these machines sell items like Apple iPods, Neutrogena hair products, and skin products, Sony products. The vending machines accept credit cards and allow sales to occur in places where storefronts would be impossible. Through partnering with different companies, today's, today's Zoom shops sell a variety of brands, including products from Sephora, Best Buy, Macy's, and Rosetta Stone. So there are attempts to, to include, you could see this as a, a market channel intensity kind of a play by providing additional locations where certain types of products can be made available. So there's two types of, or two main types of, dis, of distribution to think about. There's exclusive distribution, which exists when a manufacturer gives an intermediary the sole right to sell a product in a defined geographic territory. Such exclusivity provides an incentive uh, for a dealer to handle the product uh, that has a limited market. They're, they have the exclusive right to sell it, so they're more willing to accept a limited market, not, not as not something everyone will buy, but only certain people will buy. Exclusive distribution is the opposite of intensive distribution in that products are purchased and consumed over a longer period of time and service or information is required to develop a satisfactory sales relationship. Um, another thing to think about is physical distribution. This includes all the activities are necessary to move products from producers to consumers. That's the inventory control, uh, transportation, warehousing, and materials handling. Physical distribution creates time and place utility by making products available when they are wanted, where they are wanted, and with adequate service at a minimum cost. So different aspects, different flavors, if you will, of, of distribution that are part of the market channel system. Things that you have to choose from when you're designing your, designing your market mix for your products. Transportation is, as one would guess, the actual shipment of products to buyers. Transportation creates time and place utility, and, it, and that's a key element of the, in, the, in the flow of goods. Uh, the five major modes of transportation are uh, railways, as you would expect, there's still a lot of that going around. Motor vehicles, they provide greater flexibility and can provide some door-to-door -door service. Inland waterways uh, can be inexpensive, but they're also slow, you know, using the river system and the like. Pipelines are used to transport things like petroleum, natural gas, uh, semi-liquid coal, wood chips, other things like that. And air transport, of course, is speedy, but can be quite expensive. Factors affecting the choice of transportation costs include the cost, the capability, the reliability, and the availability of the transportation service, but also how fast one needs to get the product through the transportation system to determine the most cost-effective, uh, most value-producing 
approach to um, to this distribution uh, compo this con component of distribution. Another component is warehouse and materials handling. Uh, warehousing is the design and operation of facilities to receive, store, and ship products. Um, you're starting to see products being produced and uh, I mean, these, uh, the warehouses being being uh, built up uh, in many parts of the country. Amazon has a major in initiative to build warehousing locations uh, for their logistics operation. A warehouse facility receives, identifies, stores, and dispatches goods and goods to various parts of the supply chain. Uh, to supply chain, it um, it can select, pick goods, uh, store products, assembles sometimes for shipment, and finally dispatches the shipment. Companies can own and operate their own private warehouses that store and handle their goods, or they could they can subcontract with uh, logistics firms to handle this sort of warehousing and materials handling function. They sometimes uh, uh, own their own in some geographic regions and then outsource in other geographic regions, perhaps in areas where they're trying to enter a new market without the capital investment associated with their building their own warehouses. Materials handling is the physical hand, physical handling and movement of products and warehousing, uh, moving products in the warehouse and transportation system. Handling processes may vary significantly due to the differences in specific product characteristics. Efficient materials handling procedures increase the warehouse's useful capacity and improve customer service. For example, you might have very different types of materials handling, handling needs if the product is perishable like foodstuffs, or if it's not like books or whatever, you'd have different types of storage, different time frames where storage was, a, where things could be stored before they're shipped. And also different types of material, material handling issues with, associated with how delicate um, or fragile the product is that's being sold and distributed. Another aspect of, the, um, of this part of the marketing mix is packaging. Design thinking produces products that creatively solve problems and touch several people. Uh, that touch several people. For example, um, medication bottles have been problematic for a long time because incidents of children taking medication uh, be, uh, become dangerous because the bottles are too easy for them to open. So people have created uh, childproof uh, designs, which then are difficult for other people to open. Uh, so they're affected because they're unable to, older people sometimes are, are have a harder time getting to the medications they need, particularly if they need to access it quickly. Uh, generally, there's multiple magic medications in the cabinet, so you got to make sure that the, the appropriate uh, labeling uh, provides the information that's necessary, uh, including dosage and the like. Um, Clarex, for example, was designed specifically for, to solve this problem. It has a larger flat front surface where the label can be easily read and comes with colored bands so the patient can differentiate between medication based upon different types of, co of color. So the, the, this part of the marketing mix, the distribution part, many elements, and as you could see from the discussion, the value associated with a retail exchange is really divided among the various aspects of this distribution aspect of the marketing mix. And so therefore, making the right decisions and designing your product for with the right kind of distribution strategy is a main way that value is created at different points in the value chain, but in particular by the producer to make sure the producer maintains as much value as possible. How does the producer get as much value out of this mar these marketing chain, uh, marketing channel relationships as possible when retailers own the customers and the distribution channel owns how to get those products to the end customer? How do you disintermediate and get as much value for the producer as possible is one of the key strategic challenges that uh, organizations face in the marketing space. In the next lecture, we'll talk about the last of the four Ps, promotion.